Hi, Misha here, and just wrapping up another week. It was uh, relatively eventful, relatively busy. Been trying to work hard and get quite a bit done before the heat of summer hits. And uh, what do you want to talk about? How about uh, how about Star Trek Discovery? diecast models from Eagle Moss slash uh, Master Replicas. You know, uh, Master Replicas, they're, they're, they're losing their Star Trek license this month, uh, June. So uh, I wonder who will get it next. Uh, don't you want to know? Don't you want some ships from Picard or Discovery? No? Don't want to talk about that? Hmm. How about the Star Wars uh, Micro Galaxy Squadron. Those are pretty neat. I've been enjoying those as an old action fleet fan. Uh, I've released some cool stuff coming out. We're really getting to complete some collections. Uh, you know, little one inch figures. Don't you want to talk about that? No? Well, I mean, Star Wars, what, what about the Black Series? Uh, they've been really hitting pretty good this year. Uh, prices have been coming down. Some new figures. Uh, some good reveals of anniversaries. Uh, been really happy with some of the new battle droids. Hey, they're re-releasing the Emperor and his little throne chair with lightning hands. I think that's something everyone's been uh, pretty, pretty stoked about. I mean, I've said before, uh, Return of the Jedi is my personal favorite film, even though I know it's not the best. Can we, can we talk about that, please? Please? Because I don't want to talk about the thing. Hug. This is the Kobayashi Maru. This is the no win scenario. Fuck it. Hence, allegations and other things left unsaid about Donald J. Trump. My thoughts. Unplugged, as it were. Although I'm actually plugged in. At least, I hope so, otherwise this is going to be really, really bad. <sighs> Alright. I will say, I'm going to say some things. You're not going to agree with all of them. Also, I have a life. I don't live watching 24-hour news. And I don't even have a Facebook account. So, I'm sure you know some stories and data points that I don't. So forgive me on that. That's just what it is. In this day and time, it is literally impossible for any one person to hear all the little news articles that come out. Or rumors or, yeah, hints and allegations out there. Also, I wanted to say, at the end of this video, I'm going to make a point. And it should be a point we can all agree on. If we don't, then... We have some really big, big troubles. We'll find out. So I'm recording this. I'm recording this June 7, technically June 8 now, I guess, since it's past midnight, 2024. I always wanted to put a timestamp on because, you know, things could change in a heartbeat the way things are these days. Three and a half years ago, I posted a couple of videos, a couple of black boxes talking about the then current situation. The first one was pretty much saying that I had not found any credible evidence of widespread corruption, widespread voter fraud in the 2020 election. The second one came later after the Supreme Court itself ruled. Mind you, a Supreme Court with a 6-3 split in favor of Republicans. And everything went ahead. And really in that one, I was just trying to say, look, the Electoral College has voted. How they came to their decision, how the things were, that, is, that was immaterial. Their votes were cast. It was done. This should be an objective fact. Just for fun, though, I went back and read some of the comments. And I think my favorite ones that have just really just... 
I knew at the time it could be really fun, but in each of the videos people commented, this video won't age well. Really? Because I was right. And I'll be honest, out of all the election fraud accusations, I'm amazed more of them didn't actually pan out than actually did. I, let's just reflect back on how many charges were leveled, accusations were leveled, people said they had this evidence or that, and then when it went to court, they themselves, you know, there's the famous clip of Rudy Giuliani himself saying, we are not even alleging fraud. That's what he said in the court. Outside the court, different story. And that's what we hear when we look at the court transcripts. And back then, I actually took the time, because you, you could actually tune into the live feeds of a lot of the court cases, and listen to the whole bloody thing. And now, of course, I was doing other things, but I put it on the background, because I didn't need the filtering through Fox, or definitely not through MSNBC. I wanted to hear actually what was happening, the intonations, because a lot is said in, the, in, in tone, in the words that are chosen. And of course at that time one of the biggest people, Sidney Powell, who I actually kind of find funny, uh, has completely backed off. And so have many other people. Because nothing came of it. Affidavits, signed affidavits, don't really mean anything. There are plenty of signed affidavits about UFOs and Bigfoot. So what? And the thing is, too, someone signs an affidavit saying they saw something. I, even if they're being truthful, did they know what they were seeing or understand what they were seeing? What I noticed would happen, accusations with evidence, sometimes even video evidence, would be brought up, presented. Hey, this happened. Counterpoint, the other side would say, yes, that happened. This is the reason why. Now, in a healthy debate, then the other side would counter saying, I understand that's the reason why, however, that doesn't seem true. But what would happen, the side accusing would just ignore the rebuttal and keep on with the original evidence and not address the counterpoint. And you see this a lot in like Flat Earth too. When people, when Flat Earth try to debunk the globe and then globe people go back at them and say, no, you're wrong and this is why, the flat earth people just ignore what the globe people say, and that's what happens. That means you have no answer to the counter argument. And in any form of debate, the person with the last argument that's still standing is the winner. And of course, I can't break down every accusation that was put out back then. But I can say after three and a half years, A, nothing has ever been found in court outside of the normal corruption and normal small-time election fraud and even just you know errors because human beings make errors even computers make errors that happens in every single election since the dawn of democracy not a good thing we want to get that as close to zero as possible we never will but it's it's an admirable goal so that's that another thing this conspiracy to defraud the American people, an international thing that was alleged. I want to be 100% honest, and you can believe me or not, but I can only be truthful. When it was first announced in November of 2020, I took it dead serious. Because like a lot of people, I thought if Donald Trump, if Rudy Giuliani, if these other people are making such serious accusations they must have some really good evidence they believe it that's maybe when my attitude started to change because to say I was disillusioned would be an understatement I kind of figured politics being what they are some of the things are turned out to be false alarms smoke but Fundamentally, I figured at least some of the things would be real. I really did. 
here we are, and I'm sorry. Have you ever tried to get a handful of friends, say, let's, let's be really generous and say four to agree on something and to make... Have you ever tried to do like a surprise birthday party? You know how hard it is to keep that secret for a few weeks or even a few days? A conspiracy on the level that was alleged would have had to involve thousands, tens of thousands of people, and there would be some type of paper trail, even if it were obfuscated. Someone would have blown the whistle. They have not. And at this point, so many years later, logically I have to conclude that means because they do not exist. Now, why am I kind of dredging up ancient history? To be honest, this isn't something I've thought about much in the last few years. Time moves on. Right or wrong, and trust me, this isn't the first election in U.S. history that was accused of being rigged. There were plenty in the late 19th century. It was a messy, messy time. Not to mention, you know, places like Chicago and and uh, Pennsylvania and New York in the 1920s and 30s. Trust me, elections have been dirty business in America for a very long time. But the reason I bring it up is because Donald Trump does. He has not stopped beating this drum. He has not revealed any new evidence. It's the same tired talking points. And when really, really pressed, it comes down to many people say, many people feel, it just doesn't feel right. Something's wrong. The numbers don't look right. It, it, it's, it's like gut. And as a rather famous person once said, facts don't care about your feelings. And we don't have facts. It all, when you really, really boil it down, comes down to it just doesn't feel right. And I think that's because people are in their own bubbles on both sides. People surround themselves with Democrats or Republicans if they're that. And if you live in an area, most people conform to whatever that area is going with. You go to LA or any other major city, Chicago, you're gonna find Democrats. Everyone's gonna have voted for whoever and hates Trump. You go to the rural south or the Midwest, small towns, it seems like everyone's Trump supporters. And so for those people, they look around and, well, everyone I know voted for Trump. At least they say they did. Keep that in mind, too. People can tell you they voted for one person and didn't. And, you know, normally I'd say lying is bad, but there's a few things like how many people you had sex with in your life or, um, you know, how well did you wipe your asshole last time? Or th There's some things that are just none of your fucking business. And I was raised that that, asking a woman her age, and asking so much how much someone how much they make in a year, those are just things you just don't ask. So kind of give a pass. And if you live in a community where everyone's voting one way and you went the other, it behooves you just for your own peace of mind to just kind of go with it at breast. And that's it, because we all have to live. We all have to work. I mean, this isn't, we're not 19 year old idealists. We're adults that have to work in the real world. And that is part of it. But it is the same old song and dance. We're running for a new election cycle and Trump still claims not only 2020 was stolen, but remember guys, he said 2016 was rigged, even though he won. This is his MO. It is the quintessential boy who cried wolf. And the sad thing is, if there actually is a rigging, 
it's nigh on impossible to believe someone who's told you everything that goes against him is rigged. I hope that makes sense. I mean, think about it. Let's, let's say it's not Donald Trump. Let's say it's your neighbor across the street. Let's say they get pulled over by the cops. You might sympathize. But what if it happens a half dozen times? Is it really the cop's fault? Or might you just maybe start to figure they're doing something illegal, or at the very least to tick the cops off? Again, I'm from a small town, so I know how that goes. Sometimes the cops will harass you if you're just being a dick. Realities of things. And this is something most of us would give to not just a neighbor, but even a family member. If a family member keeps telling you, what, what if you've got a, a sister that's been married five times, and she talks about what jerks her husbands all are? Either A, she's actually the problem, not them, or B, if we want to be generous, I mean, we all love our sisters, maybe she really does. Maybe she is a good person. Maybe her husbands all are jerks, but then, why does she keep agreeing to marry or asking to marry jerks? You know, the old saying of, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. So one way or the other, the fact that this keeps happening to Trump, it blows back on him. And I do practice what I preach. I do acknowledge personal accountability because you have to in life. You can't blame other people for your misfortunes. Just last week, I made a mistake. I'm down to very few Swiss 5.50 pistols. A gentleman ordered a gun with black furniture and silver metal. I set it aside for him, or at least I thought I did. I had sold out over the holiday weekend, Memorial Day, except for the one I set back for him. So no harm, no foul. His check came, cool. Turns out I set back black plastic furniture, black metal. Now, you can understand, I can make a ton of excuses. I mean, I literally cannot see the color of the metal. This is one of the easiest mistakes for me to make, and it would be an honest accident. You know what I did? asked him to call me and said I made a mistake I put back the wrong gun what would you like to do offered him his money back offered him a few other guns I had that's all I could do was own it even though I had a good reason a good excuse if you will I'm not gonna do that and I try not to because I was raised to not use my disability is a crutch, nor do I want to. I want to stand on my own feet because once you start excusing true accidents like that, then it does become a slippery slope of where you let yourself in your own mind get away with more and more and more and more. And then you're no longer the person you want to be, or even the person you think you are in your own head. How many times has Donald Trump gone to court? Now, when you're in business, it happens. It, it just does. It's a, it's a normal thing. But, the level he's gone is above average. And more importantly, typically, when you go to court, either you settle or sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Look at the actual rulings. Almost every single time he's gone to court, he's either settled or been found liable. I say that because up until now, it's all been civil stuff. I think Trump University is one of the most uh, well-known cases, but... There have been plenty of others. Again, a few times, I understand that's an average business person. But the level is higher and it doesn't pass the sniff test. Going back to feelings, if 
he can feel the election was stolen. I can feel there's something there. But on top of that, it, it just, look at his behavior post-election. Heck, look at my behavior before the 2020 election. I didn't have a whole lot to say about Trump. He didn't spend a lot of time in my head. I did not like Hillary in 2016, so if anything, I was interested and even slightly excited when he won in 2016. I'll be completely honest. Because Hillary was a vote for the usual. Plus, just a thoroughly unlikable person. Intelligent, but unlikable. I think like a lot of America, I think we were ready just to roll the dice with something different. And if nothing else, he is entertaining. Good grief, how many on the left have made complete careers out of it. But I digress. But what's he done? Okay, we, got, we get through all the election stuff. Only president in history not to concede the election. Even Al Gore. Now, I know people like to throw, well, Hillary didn't. Hillary took a couple of days, and then she actually did concede in 2016. It is a matter of public record. Did she like it? Did she swallow it? Like, Bill one or two all those years, and she probably never did? Yeah, but she actually did concede, even before year's end. We got into 2017, I mean, 70, 20, 21, and, and Trump had not. I'm not even going to ch touch on January 6th. It was, the people lost their lives. It was absolutely tragic. People had their lives destroyed. Absolutely tragic. And I feel like we don't really have all the evidence, all the evidence yet because that has not been taken to trial yet. I just, I just, I, I felt horrible the day that happened. But anyway, that's not normal. And what did you do after? You know, there were all these QAnon things for months. Oh, he's actually secretly in charge. He's going to come in and, and, and march because that was the old, that was the old inaugural day. Oh, no, wait, it's August of 2021. That's when he's really coming in. How many times before people start to kind of not believe all these prophecies? And then what does he do? The Trump NFT thing, you know, making this thing, oh, I've got this big announcement for the nation. Nope, Trump NFTs. How did that benefit anyone besides him? That didn't benefit one single church. It didn't benefit the Second Amendment in any of its foundations. It wasn't even donated to help build the wall or anything like that on a private level. It went into his coffers, which immediately went out for other things. That's all it did. From there, how many other times has it happened? Money in, money out. Easy come, easy go. Trump will say things like, if they can do it to me, they can do it to you. Yes, in a democracy, that's how law works. And frankly, that's how it obviously should work. I don't understand why that is a statement that should be a bad thing. And he says, I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for America. Bullshit. Talk's cheap. Show me. And that's the legacy. He had power for four years, two of which completely Republicans across the board. What was accomplished? We wanted a businessman to run the economy. We went into debt eight trillion more. We thought he would be good for Second Amendment rights. He was not. We thought he would help with immigration, crime, all that. No evidence. 
the one time we really needed him to be a leader he did not COVID could have been his absolute meal ticket to a breezy re-election instead he twisted it around and it was his death nail Joe Biden didn't have a snowball's chance in hell before that but he sure did come October of 2020 after Trump continually made the wrong decision you know we said we didn't want someone who was a politician well we definitely got someone who didn't act like one he did not show any political acumen he didn't show the art of the deal when it came to negotiating for politics he adopted its my way or the highway attitude he was the genius when it came to everything he was an expert lawyer an expert doctor he knew everything you ever meet those people in life remember cliff from uh, cheers that you know know it all and everything again imagine it was someone your neighbor down the street you know we all have that know-it-all neighbor would you look past it because trump is one of the biggest know-it-alls out there which is really funny because he he kind of doesn't know shit and that's just it every truly intelligent well-rounded knowledgeable person i know they are the first to tell you they know nothing and you know how she can spot people who are actually intelligent instead of immediately telling you they have the answer to everything they ask questions and they're interested Trump time and time again said he had the best plan ever for this or that take for example health care he's gonna rip down Obamacare and replace it oh what's your plan oh I'm working on it it'll be coming next Tuesday we never heard it not even now we've never even saw a proposal nothing not a bad one just nothing and that's how so many of his solutions end up being he claims that Putin would have never invaded Ukraine that he would fix the whole Ukraine situation he could fix the Gaza situation citation please how because we saw you being president for four years and you definitely didn't fix every problem yeah you had some good decisions every president does fair play but saying you have the answers to everything and if it were just you in charge that is a level of ego that is quite rare and unprecedented the internet loves tossing the word narcissist around I, so I'm not going to use it it's too much of a reddit buzzword these days so nah not going to do that but if he's got all these great solutions lay them on me hell lay on a bad solution I've listened to Bernie Sanders and all them give solutions that they think will work I don't agree sometimes a lot of the time sometimes but at least you can hear their plan Trump doesn't do that he talks vague that way people can fill in the blanks to make it the best possible thing in their own head that's what people do who are con men who are scam artists they tell you just enough so that you think I agree with this person but then you realize they told you nothing not really and those people if you were ever to meet them in real life you know, they say never meet your heroes that is definitely true for Donald Trump because let's talk about his court cases and it's accused that oh the Democrats are after him of course they are it's politics the Democrats well they were after George W Bush the Republicans were after Bill Clinton probably one of the last presidents no one was seriously after was uh, Ronald Reagan and he still had a wrong contra Jimmy Carter one of the nicest humans at least most Christian decent humans on the planet yes I know in recent years is ideologies change either way he still he still acts like it he had controversies too 
it happens to every political person. But at least with Reagan, no one was really trying to take him down. And at least under Bush, after 9-11, the Democrats, for a time, rallied around him, which is what you do in, in a time of crisis. But let's set that aside. We're going to revisit that in a minute. But I wanted to talk about people around Donald Trump. He said time and time again he picks the very best people. He's an excellent judge of character. Awesome. Ronald Reagan was. One of the benefits of Ronald Reagan, even when his second term, he started to suffer from mental health issues, which eventually led to Alzheimer's. Not his fault. It happens. But he picked good cabinet people, good advisors. We've seen this time and time. A good advisor can really get you there. I mean, I think one of the problems with George W. Bush wasn't him as a president. I actually like him as a human being, but uh, let's just say some of his advisors weren't the best in the world. So Donald Trump picks the very best people, right? Right? Problem with that. When you look at Donald Trump's court cases, you know who's testifying against him? It's not Democrats. It's not Democratic senators. It's, it's not Democratic activists. It's not people from MSNBC or CNN. Almost without fail, they are former Trump employees, cabinet members, hire. For me, when William Barr, when Bill Barr said that there was no widespread election problems and that this was all, I believe that. He is someone who should know. And he bent over backwards to be a loyal member of Trump's group. And he was definitely a fan of more power to the executive less power in the hands of, of the bureaucrats okay so when you have someone like him who's credible and an expert saying that this didn't happen and then you look at all these people from low-level interns in their 20s to seasoned political veterans not even turning on trump just having to say that trump is wrong probably because they told him he was wrong in private and he didn't listen, and then publicly he continues to be wrong. These are the witnesses. And these are the people, the company he keeps. And there's, there's kind of two types. There are the people that are good people that got into his campaign in, the, in 2016 that were Republican Party people that really wanted to see a change. And they got out when it went too far and they will testify. But then you also have people who are testifying, Michael Cohen being the most prominent example, who are criminals, most of them felons. And you could say, well, they're, they're criminals, they're felons, we can't trust them. No, generally I would agree with that, but criminals testifying on other criminals, that's how court cases work, mob cases, drug cases, how often does a drug dealer turn on the drug manufacturer in court for a lighter sentence or whatever? Or maybe they are sincerely remorseful. The thing is, you judge people by the company they keep. What does it say about a man who his closest people, his very best people he picked, ended up getting convicted of crimes? We're in the South, as the saying goes. Don't be surprised if you get dirty when you wrestle pigs. Even if Donald Trump were clean before, dealing with that many people over that many number of years is compromising. But he wasn't clean because he was a criminal just like the rest of them. So time and time again, Trump employees, associates, partners, lawyers either turn on him or get convicted themselves and if they don't well if it's politically or just in any way 
useful to him, he will throw them under the bus. Again, mob boss behavior. This is how crimes and gangs work. It's how actually you prove your loyalty. You take the bullet for the boss, go to jail, serve your time, and then when you're out, you're in, you're trusted. That's exactly what we're seeing here. That's not good. Remember when I said earlier when I screwed up on that gun color? The boss, the president, the buck stops here. Rather than have people under them take the kit, you protect those under you, those with less power, those more vulnerable. You take the hit because you can weather it better. Trump demands loyalty, but it only goes one way. He's only loyal to you as long as you're useful, as long as it's convenient for him, and as long as it really costs him nothing. Talk is cheap. And that's exactly how he treats the American voter. Is he pro two way? Well, he sure was in 2016 wanting votes. All he had to have done in 2017, just to let the 2A crowd know they were appreciated, some small executive order. That was a bone. Or again, since the Republicans had the control of, of Congress for the most part, pass some law. The hearing safe thing could have passed, whatever. And as the Supreme Court became more and more favorable, you know it would have been upheld. Nothing. Crickets afterwards. Moreover, after Las Vegas, which was a terribly tragic shooting, as was the nightclub shooting in Florida, he immediately said, you know, take all the guns, go to court to get your guns back. Somewhat ironic in hindsight. And he pushed and pushed and pushed for the so-called bump stock man. Pushed it in. Even when the ATF of all people said, sir, we don't have the authority for that. He gave them the authority, which is a whole can of worms that I've talked about in the past. Donald Trump, not Joe Biden, expanded the bureaucracy of the ATF's authority and reach. That is unforgivable and exactly the opposite of what a true conservative would do. And, of course, while the initial collection of concern, Ishmash ban, definitely happened under Obama, 2014, the extension of it, which included several Russian companies, including Molot, happened in June of 2017. If Putin loves Put uh, <laughs> Trump so much and Trump loves Putin so much, why did that go through? I know I'm simplifying it, but then again, that's what Trump does too. Immigration is a problem. I think everyone is finally agreeing that. What's the solution on Trump's thing? Build a wall. Uh, that's not the solution. There, there needs to be a solution. It's not that simple. It's almost like, what was his health care plan? Hey, everyone don't get sick. Simple. Yeah, it'd be nice if life were simple like that. This is something most of us grew out of when we hit about 15 or 20 years old. Some of us even, you know, 5 or 10 years old. But it's all talking points. It's all smoke and mirrors because he's just telling American groups what they want to hear. Not the truth. And I know all politicians do that. One of the first lessons my father taught me was politicians lie. Don't, you can listen to them. Just don't believe what they say without verification. Look at their record. Look who they are. By the way, my father knew Bill Clinton, so I wonder where he got that attitude from. Trump courts the Christian sect in America very successfully. Trump pulled the Bible stunt this year. That is so goddamn close to being blasphemy. And I know phrasing is quite funny. I did that intentionally. 
it wasn't like he was donating his proceeds. And I know that he was not technically head honcho doing the Bibles. He was a, basically a paid sponsor, spokesman. He was getting money from it. Ironically, those Bibles were made in China. At the very least, it would have been nice if he had employed Americans. Shit, even I'll take Canadians or people down in Mexico to do that work. At least North America, guys, come on, something, NAFTA, I don't know, whatever, but China. And they, I've actually seen several book reviews from actual Christians, not just people slim by, to say, you know, as a Bible, they're cheap and crappy. I say that because we have an old family Bible in our family. We actually have quite a few around. So nice Bibles are are true works of art. Uh, not dissing that. That's they're they're great and they they can be family heir, heirlooms. That ain't it. That ain't the Trump Bible. In addition, I find something skeezy about putting the U.S. Constitution and all that. It was the, the Declaration of Independence. Sorry, in the Bible. Yeah, I am a very proud American, very patriotic, frankly. I very much admire the Founding Fathers, but they were just men. That has no place in a book purported to be the Word of God, the creator of everything. That's That would be like putting a five-year-old's crayon drawing that maybe is quite good for a five-year-old, or that you're very proud of, in a book dedicated to the works of Picasso or Da Vinci. It, that doesn't work. And then charge out the nose for it. What, 60 bucks? Whatever it is. And then also have it made in China. It's fucking bullshit. And around Easter, too. I don't know, that made me mad. That might be the first thing he ever did that actually made me mad. A lot of it, I, I think the best word for me would be bemused. Christians, just like everything else, he's lying to you. This is a man who doesn't even ask for forgiveness or think he needs it. He does not go to church. He doesn't even say he goes to church. And he's only a Christian when he wants your votes. Come on, please, please realize this. For your own good, for your own souls. Because he's poisoning something. And that's what Trump does. He takes people with him. And I don't want to see that happen to good people who are just afraid or worried for their children or this country. I'm worried for this country too. I do not think the Democrats, especially Joe Biden, has the answers. But this isn't about Joe Biden. Because you don't go, well, you know, we've got two murderers here. This one's not quite as bad as the other one, so we'll just let this one go. No, they can both be convicted. And that's the horrible truth, is we're getting to the point where it's just, yeah. You can't say, well, one's good just because the other's bad. But now, Trump is starting to really bear fruit of a lifetime of his actions. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Trump has done unto others. We know how he feels about service people. He thinks they're fools and stupid. Low IQ for risking their lives for their country. He doesn't see the point. And the thing that upset me, I know he's not perfect or was not perfect, but John McCain, the way you talked about that, I was raised in a family where you don't attack a man's service. You can go at the man, that's fine, but you don't go at his service, and he did. Time and time again, he's shown disregard for the military. At the same time, he'll pretend like he's the most brilliant military commander in all, of all time. He is not. He has no military experience. Of course, neither did Bill Clinton, but he didn't play at that in the same way. At least George H. Bush truly served his country in World War II, and at least George W. Bush did his bit in the National Guard. I know it gets kind of joked about, but at least he did. He did something. And 
How does he feel about someone like me? People with disabilities. You know how I said earlier, he only cares about people if they're useful to them, if he can get something out of them. He views people with disabilities as useless. There are no photos, there are no accounts out there of him doing anything really for someone in a wheelchair, someone who's deaf, someone with a guide dog, nothing. Maybe a handshake or two here or there in a political meet and greet, which he probably went and washed his hands afterwards. He probably felt there were more cooties from someone in a wheelchair than he did with someone with COVID because he's that smart when it comes to medicine. He probably thought be having your legs paralyzed was more catching than the flu. And, well, we definitely have videos of him out there mocking people with disabilities, including, of course, Joe Biden. Again, Joe Biden's a politician. To me, fair play to make fun of him except for his stutter. It is a medical documented fact. He's had stuttering problems. Uh, fun fact, so did James Earl Jones uh, his whole life. That used to be beyond the pale. Even FDR's critics and political opponents, and he had many, did not go at his having polio because the, that was a gentleman's agreement. That was ethics. I admire that. Donald Trump has no such reservations. If he were to meet me, he would absolutely mock me. I have zero doubt of that in my mind. If you do, convince me I'm wrong. Show me evidence of him actually being kind-hearted to someone down on their luck with a disability, misfortunate, and in no way wanting something back. I don't mean it a political fundraiser. I don't mean on camera for a photo op. I mean a sincere human moment. Yeah. That's why all these things are happening to Trump now. All these court cases are coming all these people from Trump's past are testifying against him. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. These are the fruits. You will know them by the fruit of their labor. This is his fruit. This isn't the Democrats. Many times in the last three years, he could have stopped this. Many times in the last three years, he could have compromised. He could have at least said, I'm sorry. I've seen people compare him to Bill Clinton and his sex acts. Here's the difference. Bill Clinton lied, but he also told the truth later. Bill Clinton also admitted to his external affairs. He didn't want to. Who would? But he did. He settled out of court. Paula Jones, but unlike what Trump has done with Stormy Daniels, Clinton admitted culpability publicly and paid money to her publicly. And that's the difference. And that gets us to our trial. It is a white collar crime. They are not easy to understand. Rape, murder, theft. We understand those. They're base crimes. Essentially, and I, I'm not even going to go into it. It doesn't matter. But it's not the fact that he had an affair. It's the fact that he misappropriated funds to cover it up. And I do agree with Mitt Romney. I got flack in the past for saying that I like some things Mitt Romney's done. I do. I also want to point out that it's not just Democrats. You know, whenever a Republican comes out against Trump, they're automatically labeled rhino. No. 
It is okay to disagree. At least it has been up till now. Within a house. How often in your own family are there disagreements around the, the Thanksgiving table? Does that mean the other family member that has the opposite opinion of you is no longer a, a uh, you know, a Smith or a Jones? Of course not. That's crazy talk. You simply have a disagreement. The same thing happens in the Republican Party. At least it should. Just because someone disagrees with Donald Trump doesn't mean they're not a Republican. Hell, compared to a lot of them, Donald Trump's a newcomer. Go back 15 years, he was a Democrat. Sorry. Just because they disagree with Trump. All rhino means now is they don't agree with Trump and fall in lockstep, including Mitt Romney there. <sighs> yeah. See the problem? Back to that, though. Mitt Romney said he's never heard of someone paying $130,000 to someone to be quiet when they didn't have sex with them. Because you know what? Someone in Donald Trump's position... There are crazies that come out of the woodwork claiming stuff all the time. How many people claim that they had Barack Obama's baby? You ignore them. And if they do something too horrible, you sue them. You only pay them money if you know they've got real evidence. No, nah, he knew he did something with her, and he at least suspected she could have had evidence of it because it happened. It was a real physical... If it hadn't ever happened, what would he have to worry about? I don't care what she said and did. Again, people, and he knows this, he's been a public figure his entire life. You let that stuff wash off of you. This is what you do. The worst thing you can do is acknowledge it, pay him off, and they come back for more. Now, is she a credible person? Heck no. Remember what I said about rolling with pigs? But just because someone that's testifying against you is bad doesn't automatically put you on the side of the angels. You could be bad too, because you're associated with a bad person. Whatever. There's another thing. Another lie. He swore up and down he would testify. He did not, which didn't shock anyone. And then he said, well, you know, they, they'd accuse him of perjury and all that bull. Not for what he's saying. Oh, you say it was a sunny day and it was actually rainy. No DA, no judge on this planet would care about that. Perjury is not about getting small details wrong. Because we all do that. Guess what? They're humans. It's about lying about the important facts and knowing so. And his lawyers begged him not to testify because he would get on his soapbox about the election fraud or something else that is a lie because there's no evidence and if he got on that thing in court or something else it could go horribly wrong that's why he didn't testify because he couldn't just simply answer the questions and tell the story and heaven forbid he said I'm a human, I'm a man, 20 years ago, I was weak, I made a mistake, I love my family, I repent. Because Donald Trump, like anyone with a huge ego, cannot admit to the even smallest mistake. Or to not knowing the smallest thing. Again, he's one of those guys that's an expert on everything you bring up. He cannot admit to the smallest human effort and foible. By the way, he could have taken the stand. No one on earth, on earth could have prevented him. Gag order had nothing to do with it. That was another lie. And pretty much everything he said was another lie. Because guess what? He's a liar. And when people cite stuff these days, oh, I heard this and that, it's usually because Donald Trump said so. He is not credible. Too many times things he said either were not substantiated or were simply proven untrue with evidence. He is not credible. He will lie to your face. And he's the best kind of liar because he sincerely either believes it 
or has no conscience, no morality. He feels nothing wrong with lying to people because the ends justify the means. And this is why so many of his old associates are coming out of the woodwork, not because they're secret Democrats, not because someone's paying them, but because either they really decided they wanted to be on the side of right in the country, or he, they were thrown under the bus and they want a lighter sentence, or they want to avoid jail time themselves, whatever. So let's talk about the judge and the, the jury. So, needs to move the venue, right? Can't get a fair trial. Constitution doesn't give you the right to a fair trial. It gives you a right to a trial judged by your peers. Donald Trump's from Manhattan, New York. Those people were literally his peers. How is that unfair? Would putting it in Florida be more fair? Why is it that if he's in a red state where the bias is in his favor, that's fair? But if he's in a blue state where the overall bias is against him, that's unfair. Hmm? Also, by the average, 12 people, surely one of them either voted for Trump or at least was leaning that way. Keep in mind, it was not just the prosecutor who picked the jury. It definitely wasn't the judge who picked him, not directly. It was a combination of both teams, including Donald Trump's team, the defense. They had equal say in picking a total of 18, you know, 12 plus 6, you know, that trial in that case, including veto power over a couple just because they didn't like the cut of their jib. That's as fair as it gets. Are they human? Can they be swayed? Can they make mistakes? Absolutely. freaking lutely But he got the trial by a jury of his peers, and because he is wealthy, he was able to buy the best legal team he could. He was not a defendant having to rely on a public defender like so many New Yorkers have to. What about the judge? So, it's said forever that he's corrupt that he's compromised okay New York definitely has a history of corruption here and there evidence please the only thing that Judge Mershon did that is proven is some time ago he donated $35 to a Democrat fund did he hide it is it an unknown thing nope he was actually investigated and brought up on it and it went through the proper channels for education in New York. Here's the thing, if it had been $35 to a Republican fund, it would have been equally unallowed per the terms, but I guarantee you Trump's supporters would not be kicking up high heaven for that. How do we know? Because. Uh, Far more than $35 has been proven on certain Trump judges. I should also mention that, you know, plenty of Trump-appointed judges, not to mention Republican judges in general, oversaw all the cases that were brought during the election, and several set on the Supreme Court now. Plenty of Trump judges have had a chance to look at his cases, and we're still here. So even if Judge Mershon is left-leaning, we all have to lean somewhere. How many judges are perfectly center, perfectly neutral? Essentially none. So what? A professional can leave their political biases at the door. And if you can't understand how that can be done, that's a you problem more than a them problem. Doctors treat people of political different persuasions all the time. EMTs probably help people who've overdosed on drugs and they might have some very strong feelings about drug addicts all the time. Firefighters don't ask whose house that is before they do their job. Mailmen will deliver the mail one way or the other. Professionals can set that aside. 
at least they should, and most of the time they absolutely do. Is it the easiest thing in the world? No, not all the time. But professionals are talented people that can do that. What's the alternative? Only Republicans can try other Republicans and other Democrats can try un other Democrats? Think about it. What will we do? That would give a truly divided society. No, we cannot go down that route. And let's keep in mind, for decades, for centuries, it is, has not been an issue, at least not on this level. And now suddenly it is. But let's just say he is compromised. He's a left-leaning judge that railroaded Trump. Okay? Examples, please. Specific examples of what he did, rulings he made in court, decisions he did in court that were against Trump. What did he do that disadvantaged Trump's defense? Hmm? What specific calls did he make? It's not about not allowing their witnesses. That's bullshit. I'm sorry it is. I don't care what it said. Again, Trump lies. This is all stuff Trump is saying. The judge didn't make the ruling. That was the jury. You know what, though? It is true. Trump is not being treated fairly. He has been shown more grace and more leniency, as would Joe Biden in his position, absolutely. Any political figure, any wealthy person would, than just your average common street criminal. He was allowed to get away with more. You think every time, you know, someone gets in court for a drug charge or a, th a breaking and entering charge, do they walk out and have cameras in their face and, and tell how the judge is treating them unfairly? Do you think they really get to pick their jury? Do they get to pay millions of dollars for a defense team? No. Trump had every advantage the money could buy, and he still does the old whiny, piney thing about poor old me. Life isn't fair. I wasn't treated fairly. Put on your fucking big boy pants. Who told you life is fair? Again, this is something we usually learn at 10, 15 years old, sometimes even younger if you have a rough childhood. But you had plenty of advantages and leg up, and you had plenty of support, more than most criminals get. So yeah, I don't want to hear it. Because again, the alternative is only Republican judges for Republican defendants and vice versa. And even then, here's the thing. Even if Mershon had been an avowed Republican and the case went this way, then he would get slapped with a rhino label. There's no winning. And if the verdict had gone the other way, then it would have been the best trial ever, the most fair trial ever. It's all excuses. It's all feelings. It's all this. It's all that. Because Trump tells people that he's doing it for them, that he's a surrogate for them. He is not. He is not giving to you. He's taking from you. He is using you. He is lying to you. And he is a felon. He is a convicted criminal. Doesn't matter what the charges are. By the way, Plenty of other people in New York have been convicted of exactly what he was. Look it up. They didn't invent these charges for him. Maybe he really didn't know they existed. Again, he thinks he's an expert. He thinks he's the best lawyer ever. He's not. This is just yet more evidence that he doesn't know half as much as what he... He thought he was being smart with that money. And he wasn't half as smart as he thought he was. He was treated unfairly. He was screwed over by Donald J. Trump. What's particularly ironic from the 2A community is this is someone they thought was going to protect them from having their guns taken by the Democrats and that would even expand their gun rights. 
not only did he not do that, now he has lost his right to own firearms. And you know, he will get his right to vote back one way or the other. But outside of a pardon or being overturned in the appellate court, he will never get his guns back. He will get his right to vote, some other rights, but that's one right a felon just cannot get back. Thing two, speaking of guns, people say, well, it was a white collar crime, it was a paperwork thing. I agreed. Let's talk Hunter Biden. He is going to trial for filling out the paperwork on a 4473 for a firearm. Wrong. Answering dishonestly. That's also a white collar paperwork crime. I bet Trump's people want to see Biden, or sorry, <laughs> Hunter Biden prosecuted for that, don't they? Funny how when the shoe's on the other foot, you're all for it. I am too. I people asked me uh, in the uh, in the last video what I thought about it. absolutely Hunter Biden or even Joe Biden should not be above the law. Absolutely, I'm completely on board with that. And I've got some Democrat friends that absolutely think Hunter Biden's being railroaded. But that's how it goes, especially when you're a public figure. You should be keeping your nose extra clean because you know you have political enemies and opponents. That is something you have to do, especially if you're not willing to negotiate with them, compromise with them, work with them, make friendships, make partnerships, that kind of thing. So I find it particularly ironic that Trump is losing his guns now, or has lost them. He is a felon. Legally, this is what I said two, three and a half years ago, that the Electoral College had voted, so everything else before. The 12 jurors have decided unanimously. Keep in mind, it only would it have taken one person on there to say, nah, I'm not sure, and it wouldn't have happened. Keep in mind, too, it took them only a couple of days that's good. That was almost the perfect time. I will say this, you know, uh, all the things Trump says happened perfect around him. That's about perfect for a, a prosecutor. Enough time that you can definitely tell they examined the evidence, went over it, but not so much that you can really tell that there was any deliberation or any like real uncertainty. They took just enough time to review the evidence and then they came to a unanimous decision on 34 charges yeah. It's hard to get four people to agree on the most simple things. To get 12 people to agree on something so serious, that's monumental. And I want to say this. CNN, Fox News, you, me, we weren't in that courtroom. We didn't see the evidence. Not directly. It's all hearsay. They did. How dare any of this any of us say we know better than 12 people who gave their undivided attention to this for two months. What arrogance that is. And what arrogance and presumption is it to say, oh, they were all Trump-hating Democrats. Again, because Trump's team picked them just as much as anyone else. There's too much assumption there. And it's only because you want so desperately for Donald Trump to be the person he tells you he is, not the person he actually is. If he truly loved this country, if he truly wanted to make things better, solve our problems, if he truly cared about people the way he says he does, if he was truly a Christian, if he truly believed in the right of firearms, and if he truly believed in law and order and supporting the police, if he truly believed in promoting world, world peace in places like Ukraine and Israel, that would be wonderful. No humans that good are knowledgeable to begin with. 
And again, he had four years as president. It wasn't hell. It wasn't the worst thing ever. But we weren't exactly living in a new utopia, guys. And he's never once reached across the aisle. I'm sorry, he's a divider, not a uniter. You should not have that in a president. That's not the job of a president. A president is the president for Democrats, Republicans, Independents, whites, blacks, Hispanics, native born, immigrants, everyone. That's not to say they can't have a political agenda. Of course they can. But at the end of the day, their loyalty is to their oath, to the Constitution, to the people who put them there. And the people who didn't vote for them. Because they're supposed to be big enough to turn the other cheek. And win people over that way. And we've seen plenty of Republican presidents do that in the past. We have. We've seen so many presidents come much closer to the ideal Donald Trump wants to present him as, himself as, but he isn't. You know, in New York, we could argue that's a white collar crime, but it is a crime. If you or I cheated on our taxes, fin finagled our money around like that, you know damn well they would come at us too. And we wouldn't have millions of people in this country defending us. If your neighbor down the street got in trouble with the IRS for some tax thing, you might feel sorry for him. But what would you really think? The one area, you know, the, the DC trial January 6th, okay. And the whole documents thing down in Florida, that's a topic for another day. The one though, that to me is ironclad, is Georgia because we have the phone call. And it amazes me how many people never listened to it. I listened to the whole hour and whatever minutes it was when it came out, and it was fascinating from beginning to end. It was more dramatic than a lot of TV shows. It was like an, another episode of Breaking Bad. But he's no Gus Fring, I promise you that. That was a crime. He may never get found guilty for that it might get delayed forever but no US president should ever make a call like that please if you have not heard the unedited version please listen to it and then understand why that was not appropriate and more importantly not right and I have infinite respect for Raffensperger in particular going forward he stood up to his potential oath of office he did the right thing and I again absolutely respect that and of course he was a Republican and in no way a rhino stop that people who disagree with Trump are not rhinos. They just simply disagree with Trump. It's the, you know, no true Scotsman argument or the purity test argument, if you will, whatever. So that's what I think. That's where we're at. I think Trump is getting his just desserts and I think he's had more opportunities to do good in this world than most anyone else gets and he's chosen time and time again to do the selfish thing now sometimes the selfish thing can benefit other people too sometimes there's a there's a nice situation in life where hey what's good for us can also benefit other people that's cool and politicians by their nature are pretty selfish but once in a while they just do something for the nation for the greater good Trump doesn't even have loyalty to the Republican Party. He has co-opted it. He is using it for his own purposes. And just like Stormy Daniels, he'll discard it when it's no longer useful to him. This is someone who is a felon. Please think about this. 
See? Even God's chiming in. That was thunder, by the way. Because we need more rain. Please. And I want to say this. I said at the end, I had something I wanted to really get across. And if you're still here, please listen. Throughout this video, I've not brought up Joe Biden much because it's not relevant. Not on this. More importantly though, while I've talked harshly about Trump, I have not talked about you. I've not attacked people that still might be in favor of him. And that's not because I'm holding my tongue and holding back. A, an attack on Trump is not a personal attack on you. It really isn't. I have no ill will because probably you and I have more of the same values and agree on most everything else. We really do. So there's no reason for us to fight. Now we can disagree. That's fine. Uh, absolutely, that's even healthy. Disagreeing is fine. But if you're wanting to put a mean, outrage comment, if you feel in your blood boil, stop. Why? Why do you care so much about Donald Trump? Not about the Republican Party, not about the U.S. A, not about God or Jesus or guns or anything else that might be very important. Why does Donald Trump matter to you so much? Why do your emotions get built up like this? Think about it. Why is this the thing that works you up? Did you ever feel this way? As much as we all like Reagan, did anyone really feel that strongly about Reagan when Iran-Contra happened? Granted, I was quite young, but, you know. What has he done? Not said, but done to earn such ride-or-die loyalty. Once you strip the words away and look at his actions and what results from his actions, he doesn't have the answers. He's not Christian. He doesn't care about firearms rights. He wouldn't go on the cross for you and just putting him on the same level as Jesus or anything else like that. There's something wrong there. That's idolatry. That's wrong. That is a mortal sin. That is wrong. And what do you say to, about someone who leads people into doing those things? Think about it. Look at the people who are diehard Trump supporters. Are they happy-go-lucky, cheerful people? Or are they mad, sad, upset, angry, worked up, high blood pressure? always willing to row and brow and fight and argue. If you're one of them, think about your health. Think about who you are deep inside. Are you a happier, better person now than you were three, four years ago? Do you feel better? When you look out your window, how does the world look to you? Does it look like a darker place? This isn't Joe Biden. This isn't the Democrats that have changed things. Not like that. It's the steady drip of insidious poison coming from Donald Trump that's been in your veins like heroin. You've been lied to. You've been poisoned. Think about it. Think about who you were and who you are now. Are you happy with it? Think about where you're coming from. Think about why what I'm saying now might be making you mad. Because I don't hate you. I don't even have bad feelings for you. I want people to be better. 
Lots of people do. This isn't an evil world, at least no more than it was four, five, six, eight, ten years ago. It's just that there's a person who's been telling you it's a bad place. What kind of politician says the things about America that he does? How terrible it is and how bad it is. But, oh, if you let him in, it'll be better. That's an abuser right there. That's not someone who loves America. How can you make something great again when you think so terribly of it? And how can someone who talks so bad about people and feels so bad about people end up doing good? I've heard it said, well, I don't like you know, who he is, his morality, but I like his policies. What policies? Again, like with his health care plan, he says sweet nothings into your ear. He doesn't have a road map. And he doesn't have allies and allegiances to get things done. It's all toxic. It's all nasty. And it won't change. It won't get better. Because he doesn't want it to. His power doesn't come from uniting people. It comes from dividing people. He's that kind of person. And there's plenty in this world like that. There are. There's no answer there. It's only nastiness and darkness and a bitter old man. He's lost his allies. Now he's starting to lose members of his family. This isn't the way. But if it keeps on, he'll take the Republican Party down with him. Because if they nominate a convicted felon, that's it. And even if New York you might not believe in, anyone who can do something like Georgia, that phone call, that is not someone adhering to his oath of office. And anyone who uses the words, the language, like he does, that punches down as they say, I mean, he talks bad about immigrants, disabled people, even veterans. He only says nice things about people when they're supporting him. And even then, it's usually, what a great person he is. He loves me. He supports me. It's always a backhanded compliment. It's always self-serving. That's all he does is self-serve. At the end of the day, I'm not attacking you. I have no desire to. And again, we can disagree on the fine points. For sure. But fundamentally, Donald J. Trump is one of the most immoral, selfish, heartless human beings that's around today. I cannot support him. If I did, I would be a hypocrite. He is the exact opposite of everything my moral code stands for. He's exactly the opposite of what I was raised to think of as good. And he's for you too. He doesn't have our values from being Southern or conservative. He's a New Yorker. He's a businessman. He's a con artist. He's not sincere. Please, please, please step back before it's too late. Because we've gone past politics. We've gone into, guess what you could consider true sin or soul's spirit. 
Because, like I said, it's toxicity. He's not making the people around him feel better. They're outraged. They're nasty. And it's breaking families apart. And this isn't the Democrats. The sad thing is the Democrats have so many problems. A halfway good Republican candidate could easily defeat them this November. And that's not happening with Trump. Time and time again, he keeps losing. And I'll just end on this. Even if nothing I've said matters, even if you don't care, you think he's innocent, or if you're Machiavellian, a nihilist, and none of this matters. If morality, if Christianity doesn't matter, if firearms right... He says Joe Biden is a bumbling fool and weak. The Democrats are all these things. What does it say about him that he at every turn loses? Even if they are corrupt, even if he is a victim, blah, 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 is he so weak that he can't fight back? He wants to present himself as a strong man, tough, but he's not. He's whiny. He has the thinnest skin of any politician I can think of. He can't take the tiniest inkling of criticism. He can't let anything roll off his back. He always has to have the last word. He never can admit to any, even the tiniest amount of guilt. He's the opposite of who he says he is. And if he's so weak and short-sighted and incompetent, that someone like Joe Biden and his crew can outsmart him at every turn. He's not going to be able to get anything done if he's president. He's obviously incompetent. And this shouldn't shock us how many times it is businesses go bankrupt or otherwise under. Yeah. Elections continue to get worse and worse. Republicans 2018 2020 2022 special elections even though he has his loyalists some of them becoming absolutely diehard he's not gaining support he's not winning a bigger base and he's losing elections for his people slowly but surely because when he's in the spotlight there's no room for anyone else he takes it all for himself and leaves nothing for anyone else. He's the true definition of not being a team player. So even if you want to go for that approach, his results just don't work. His policies don't work. He can't get them put in place. So even if you like what he says he stands for, it doesn't matter because it won't happen. He keeps losing He's a loser. He's weak. I said in the last video at the end that I just, I don't like losers. I can't support someone who's that whiny and weak. He uses his disability as a crutch, and he doesn't even have a motherfucking disability. I said, what is it, like bone spurs or whatever they said? I've never met someone who's in a wheelchair or deaf or blind who whines one-tenth of what Donald Trump has. And he could say he's innocent all day long. That's fine. Every criminal in jail, prison, says they're innocent. Or they're guilty, but they should get off on some technicality. Talk to anyone who's ever spent time in jail. And uh, jailhouse lawyer is a term. That's what he's going to be. You know, it's really sad. Even if the judge shows him mercy in a month... He'll still talk bad about him. He won't get any credit. That's it's it. Even if Donald Trump hates that judge's guts, knowing that he has his fate in his hands, you think you could play nice for six weeks until the sentencing is over? Kiss ass or whatever. Or at least, you know, be quiet. Shut your trap. 
Donald Trump can't. He cannot control his mouth. And I have to wonder, the stuff we hear coming out, how bad is the stuff that doesn't come out? Or even worse, is there no filter? So is whatever goes in his head out of his mouth? That's what I mean. He can't play the game. How can someone that can't even, you know, butter up a judge to get a better sentence for six weeks be a good president? That's part of it. You have to play the game. You just do. That's how politics works. Don't like it? Don't get into them. Because that's why politics are dirty. Everyone sells their soul to get into politics. Shit, I bet Joe Biden's on his third mortgage of his soul. Probably explains Hunter. Anyway, it's just how it goes. Donald J. Trump is weak, short-sighted, incompetent, a novice politician at best, He's not loyal. He's not trustworthy. He doesn't care about me. He doesn't care about you. He is a felon. Legally. And. At the end of the day. He's a loser. It's taken all this time in life. He had almost every advantage life can give and he still managed to be a loser 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 but I'm not calling you a loser because I can understand because of how the Democrats are Joe Biden all that stuff I can understand because Trump has said some very sweet nothings. You're not a loser just because you supported him. But please step back. Please remember who matters. Your family, your friends, other loved ones. Please remember the Republican Party is bigger than D Donald Trump. At least it should be. Please, let's move past these two old men. I can't even call Biden a boomer. He's actually pre-boomer. And Donald Trump is literally the first year of possible boomerism. But technically based on his birthday, he's pre-boomer too because he was conceived before. Yeah, that's a thought. Think about uh, Daddy Trump pumping. There you go. Sometimes it's nice being blind. Because I'm a winner like that. But no, I'm being serious. I'm not... I, I, I respect you. It's not that. I understand how this happens. And I understand how these bubbles work on both sides. I think there's a lot of Democrats that are misled, too, into believing in causes. I mean, God, look at the whole Gaza situation. It's not that. Attacking Donald Trump isn't attacking you. Please understand that. So feel free to disagree. You just know, even if you disagree with me, I still respect you and I still care about you because we're, we're Americans. We're in it together. We're people. We can't identify with that. And I bet most of us have so much more in common with each other than we don't have in common. And I bet you dollars to donuts that we all have more in common with each other than any of us do with Donald Trump. Unless someone's a secret billionaire here, and if, in which case, um, shit, man, join my Patreon. Donate some money, please. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Goodbye.